Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 9 of Photoshop for Photographers and today we're going to start doing some portrait retouching. Today we're going to concentrate on the skin and that's what typically when I do any portrait retouching in Photoshop I start with the skin. So we're going to, um, this will probably be a multi-part um, episode. We'll do the skin today and I think in the next episode we'll work on the eyes and I'll use a different portrait and we'll work on the teeth and we'll do some different things and like everything else I'm trying to do in this series we're gonna start out relatively simple and then we'll start working on some more complicated and um, relatively difficult um, processing in later episodes like adding soft glows and color casts and things like that right now we'll concentrate on just uh, cleaning up the skin on this uh, image here uh, this is a photograph that I got off uh, stock photo site Dreams Time, and um, it's a pretty good uh, photo, I think, for this because um, it was a demonstration or it was a photo for acne, and so we could get rid of some of these blemishes. So the first thing when I do the skin is I do get rid of the blemishes, and I do it one of two different ways. I either use the spot healing brush or the healing brush, and the spot healing brush is a lot faster and you could go real quick. Sometimes though the spot healing brush will leave a weird red patch on the skin and in that case then I'll move over to the regular healing brush to get rid of that. And I'm going to show you both methods or both tools right now and typically um, what we'll do first is we duplicate the background. We hit Command or Control J to duplicate the background and let's get in the habit. I'm going to uh, name uh, this layer and I'm going to name it blemishes alright so we know what we did on that layer and um, now we're in the spot healing brush simply all you have to do is just make the brush slightly larger than the blemish you um, want to eliminate by hitting the right bracket key to make it bigger the left bracket key makes it smaller and if possible don't just like try to don't paint on this on the uh, image just try to press once just press once and that will usually be the most effective way to get rid of the blemish and um, remember you're gonna have to keep resizing your brush um, you don't want to make it way bigger than the blemish because then you're really you know that's overkill and you're really ruining the, the portrait in a way um, because you're healing more than where the blemish is so you're substitute you're taking away what was really there and you know adding some Photoshop uh, interpolation and we don't want that whenever possible so we just want to get rid of the blemish that is there and not really all the skin around the blemish so typically what I'll do is I'll go like this and I, I'll go relatively quick I'll just um, get rid of the blemishes that I see here and then eventually I'll zoom in and you could even see more uh, detail of blemishes and stuff like that and to zoom in I hit command or control plus a couple times and I'll zoom in you hold the space key key down and your cursor will turn into a little hand and then you could drag the image around now we see we got some looks like dry skin on the image here or on her face so we're gonna get rid of that now I mentioned that um, at times the uh, spot healing brush doesn't always work very well and in those instances then I'll use the regular healing brush now right now actually it seems to be working pretty good but I'm gonna show you how to use the healing brush um, you know um, if you run into this where you have to use it and the way this it works very similar to the spot healing brush except you have to sample an area first and to sample area you hit the alter option key and you can see your brush turns into like kinda like a bullseye and you just click down on that area and that means I sampled right there and you can see as I click on the blemish it's it moves what it, where I sampled so always try to sample somewhere near where you want to remove and that's how you would use that now as I mentioned 
You, I generally will use that when the spot healing brush isn't doing a good job. Sometimes the spot healing brush will make a big red like blotch in replacing, especially if I'm replacing a relatively large mole or something like that. Um, then it just it doesn't seem to do as an effective job. Also where you might want to use the um, regular healing brush, let's say she had a spot right here right in the crease of her eyelid. If I did that with the regular healing brush, it probably would ruin that crease. Where you could do a sample of somewhere along the crease and then um, you know, get rid of the uh, blemish that is right near the crease without, um, and it would look more natural. You know, is what. And then, as I mentioned, you want to try to avoid drawing like this, but sometimes you can like this. She has a little line in her chin there, so we could get rid of that. And um, that's that's good enough for now. I mean, you get the idea. So I hit uh, Commander Control Zero, and it brings the uh, photograph back out. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to soften the skin. Now this you might want to get out a piece of paper and take some notes because this is a multi-step process. So the first thing uh, we'll do is we uh, duplicate the background again or duplicate this layer again. So we hit Command or Control J and again I want to um, rename this and I'm going to rename it um, soften skin. Simple as that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use a high pass filter to soften the skin and I can't remember exactly where I got this from. Um, I didn't invent this or anything. I think I got this from Scott Kelby. I might have got it from Calvin Hollywood. I think it was Scott Kelby though. And I don't think he invented it either. I think he got it from somewhere else. But maybe he did. I'm not sure. But I want to give at least the credit to Scott Kelby because he's the one that I think showed me how to do it. Um, what we do now, we duplicated the layer and now we have to change the um, blend mode of this layer to vivid light. You can see now it looks absolutely horrible. Now the next thing we do is we're going to invert it. And to invert it, it's simple. Command or Control I. Now it's inverted. Now the next thing now we're going to add the high pass filter. So we go up to um, filter other high pass and we want to set it to 24 pixels so write that down 24 pixels click OK now then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some blur so we're gonna go filter blur Gaussian blur and we're gonna add the uh, three pixels of blur and click OK okay now it just looks pretty blurry you know not much beyond that what we have to do now is you need to double click right on this thumbnail that where we I named it softened skin double click on it and you'll get this box come up it's the layer style box now at the bottom it says blend if and we have gray so leave that gray and what we want to do is on the first uh, group of sliders it says this layer we want to move these sliders around now if you just move them around you can see it gets kinda weird looking it's like clearing her eyes but not her face when I move that one and this one's kinda making these weird lines around her eyes and stuff like that what we gotta do if you look real closely at this slider you see there's kind of a line in the middle of the slider control we could split these sliders in half and the way we do that is you hold the alt or option key down and grab the slider and you see how it's split in half now I'm just gonna keep moving this to the right move it to the right to about there it just I'll, I'm gonna move it again later I'm gonna split this one now by holding the alter option key down and I split that slider now I could just move it a go a, to the left and just keep moving it around until we um, get it so her eyes look clearer her eyebrows look clearer um, and we don't have any artifacts in there like we were getting before and it's still not we're not done yet so you know don't go wow this looks horrible um, 
you know, this is good enough for now. Just like this. So I'm going to click OK. Now, what we did now is we softened her skin, but we softened everything. Really, her eyes are softer, her hair is softer, and we don't want that. So what we want to do is we want to um, add a layer mask, and we want to add a black layer mask. So hold the Alt or Option key down when you click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the uh, right-hand panel. And we got the black layer mask. Now it's blocking that effect. So we're kind of right back where we started. But what we want to do is we want to get a brush, and we want, um, you know, a pretty hard brush, I would say. And what we want to do now is we want to paint in white, because we're using a black layer mask. And when I paint on white, in white on the layer mask, it's going to let this effect come through. And um, as you watch, as I do it, and what you want to do now is you want to avoid the eyebrows. You want to avoid her hair, although this flyaway hair is OK. I could hit that. You want to avoid her eyes themselves. You want to avoid her lips. You just want to get the skin of her face. And I don't know if you could see it in the video, but it's kind of brushing away that kind of, kind of freckly uh, skin she had. Here, I'm just going to show you. There it is before, and there it is after as I brushed it. Now I'm going to do all. It's going to take a second, so bear with me. So I'm going to get a bigger brush down here since there's not really anything I have to worry about. Um, I don't have to worry about painting accidentally on something I didn't want to paint on. Now, to see if I missed any spots, what you could do is you could hold the Alt or Option key down and click right on the mask. And what it will do is it'll show you the mask itself. And you can see we missed some spots here. And you could paint right here now to get these spots we missed. Now to get rid of this, we're going to hold the Alt or Option key down and click on it again. Now. I'm going to um, show you this is the before and this is the after. As you can see, we softened her skin. Let's get it in there a little better. One thing I should add I didn't mention before, make sure your brush opacity is at 100% when you do this. Now, if for some reason, this is kind of different for every portrait. If after you painted this on, if it's a little too heavy looking, you could go over to your opacity slider and you could dial down the opacity and it will um, make it look more natural. So if for some reason on the portrait you're doing it looks a little too heavy, a little too blurry, just dial down the opacity and you'll be all set. Okay, now we soften the skin. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to uh, minimize these bags under her eyes. So what we're going to do now, instead of we just don't duplicate the layer, I want to um, I, I want to flatten these layers all into one, but I want that it on top of the layer um, stack. I don't want to just have one layer when I'm done. And we've done this before. Um, you just hit Shift, Control, Alt, E. That's if you have a PC. So Shift, Control, Shift, I'm sorry, Shift, Alt, Control, E. There. Shift, Alt, Control, E if you have a PC. If you have a Mac, it's Shift, Option, Command, E. And what it does is it, it flattens out all these layers, but it puts it on top of the layers uh, stack. So now we have all these together on top. Now, to get rid of the bags under our eyes, we're going to go up to the uh, healing brush tool again, but this time we're going to use the patch tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply draw a selection around that bag that's under her eye, and we're going to then drag it down to her cheek, right there. Okay, now we're going to do it to this one too. Draw a selection. 
under her eye, try to avoid her eyelashes, and we're going to drag it onto her cheek. Okay, now I'm going to deselect it by hitting Command or Control D. Now you can see the effect looks kind of raunchy. So what we're going to do now is just dial the opacity down. Just keep dialing the opacity down till it smooths itself out and looks more natural. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key down and show you this is where we started. And hold the op Alt or Option again and click on this uh, first eyeball again. And that's what we did. So as you can see, it less than 15 minutes it took. And I was talking while I was doing it and I wasn't really taking my time to do it very well. And um, we softened her skin and we, um, well, we got rid of her blemishes first, softened her skin, and we got rid of it or minimized the bags under her eyes. So again, uh, this is the original image and this is after our work on it. Now, I'm going to zoom in. The softening of the skin Part of the reason why we use the high pass filter, as you can see, we could still see the pores in her skin, so it looks natural. That's why I like using that multi-step method to soften the skin instead of just putting some Gaussian blur on it or brushing in any blur. We um, use this high pass filter, and as you could see, the um, hopefully you could see in the video, is we could still see the pores of her skin. And I think that's important. It makes it look natural. How many times have you looked at these uh, retouched photographs of, you know, singers and, and Hollywood stars in magazines and their skin looks like plastic? So we want to try to avoid that. And I think using the high pass filter is a real effective method um, to uh, make it look very natural. And um, that's it for this episode. Now in the next episode we're going to do some stuff for the eyes. We're going to get rid of the red in the eye and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to change the color of the eye and enhance the eyes and also probably on, obviously in a different portrait we'll uh, get rid of yellow teeth. I'll show you how to do that and um, like I mentioned in every subsequent episode we're going to add more and more until you guys know how to do a complete portrait retouch using Photoshop. So that's it for now. I do appreciate everyone watching. And um, if you guys could, if you could go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd appreciate that. And go over to my website, anthonymorganti.com, and see all the stuff I have over there on photography. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at tony at anthonymorganti.com. I do get a lot of email, and sometimes I get behind. And if I get behind, I'm usually like a day or two behind. But I'll get to your email eventually. I, I do apologize if it takes a while. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.